Hello everyone, welcome to Carl's Tech Shed again. Well today what I've got for you is a rather interesting bit of kit. I bought it on eBay for 99p. It's an N-Cube uh, Media Cube for Video On Demand server. Now the seller describes it, um, he's actually put a really good description on here. Um, he's given it a bit of history. Uh, it says here that it was owned by Kingston Interactive Television Service um, which would have provided something similar to um, BBC iPlayer but it would have provided it through your um, TV. Um, it says that it was about, it's about 13 years old. Um, I've got it here with me now actually, it's an absolute beast of a machine, it's huge. Um, so much so that when I actually go into detail and I'll let you have a look at what's inside it I'll take it into the house because I've got a bit more room to move in there. Um, but just quick, uh, the basic specs are it's got 12 hard drives, um, each one is 36.4 gigs, each one is uh, a U320 80 pin SCSI interface. Um, the quality of build is absolutely amazing, it's all of the caddies, they're not made of plastic, they're actually made of uh, aluminium. So as you see that's the uh, connector for the hard drive there. It says on there it's got a model number which I've checked up and they're all 36.4 gigs. Now I can imagine this, these probably would have been in probably RAID 4 or RAID 5, most likely RAID 4 because of the age of it. Um, but uh, the, the actual processor, I'm not sure what the processor is, I was able to find very little information on, um, on the internet before or after I bought it, so um, there's not a lot I can tell you until I open it up, but I'll just let you have a quick look at the back of it as well. Bear in mind this is a very heavy bit of kit, um, the actual weight of it is in excess of 50 kilos. So as you see we've got two power supplies there, I think each one of those must be, I don't know, probably about 800 to 1 kilowatt, something like that. Let's see if I can just pull one out and let you have a quick look. Yeah, these weigh, whoa, yeah that's really heavy, that's probably about 7 or 8 kilos just in the power supply, I mean you can have a look at the size of the capacitors just here, they're huge, um, and the size of the connectors on the back. Uh, let's have a look now. Yeah, 800 watts. So there's two of them, so uh, they're redundant, twin redundant power supplies. Uh, 1600 watts total. Um, now, this is an interesting port here. I'm not actually sure what this is. It looks like a LAN port, but there's uh, nine pins in it, and there's a total of eight ports. Um, it's probably some sort of uh, proprietary connection for N-Cube, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Next to that we've got a 4 port uh, LAN card, not sure at this, no, at this point whether it's Gigabit or 10100. Most likely 10100 because of the age of it. Um, it's also got a fibre channel network card there, which is more than likely going to be Gigabit. Uh, as you'll notice there's an RS-232 port, or serial, and under here, uh, let's have a look what's under there, let's see if I can find a screwdriver. Right, I can't actually find one at the moment, but uh, I had a little peek under there earlier, and there's uh, just two USB ports under there, there's uh, nothing else under there. What else is there? I think that's about all I can show you at the moment um, until I take it into the house to pull it apart. But uh, Oh, one other thing, there's a couple of air blowers here which are quite heavy duty as well and uh, I can imagine they're going to make quite a lot of noise when I power it up. Right, I might as well take this into the house and uh, see what's inside it. OK, well here is the system in question. As you can see from the front, it's made by a company called N-Cube. Uh, as far as I'm aware, they went broke uh, in the early 2000s and uh, were never heard from again. But they made some fantastic systems. Um, as far as I'm aware, the MediaCube 4 was 
uh, one of the only units they designed which didn't have a custom built processor within it. Now as you can see from the front it takes up uh, five, it's actually a 5U rack mount server with 12 hard drive caddies on the front. Now each one of these contains an 80 pin SCSI drive. Uh, each of these are uh, 36.4 gigs each which is, is quite big for, uh, well if you put them all together that's quite big for a server which is 13 years old um, because you've got 12 drives in RAID 4 so that's uh, just under 400 gigabytes which isn't bad. As you can see there's a little asset tag there, I'll just rotate the camera. Uh, property of Kingston Communications, well not anymore. Uh, that's obviously some sort of asset tag number there and just on the top there is a little sticker which says H7 I can imagine that's probably the uh, location of where that was in the data center now under here we've got a series of indicator LEDs uh, a CD, well it looks like a CD-ROM drive um, but on some of the promotional material I found on the N Cube 4 it said that it's a DVD drive so I'll have to check that out. Just above that is a little 8 digit LED display um, I'm not sure what that would really display yet because I haven't powered it on. Uh, that's pretty much everything at the front. Now if we go round to the back Now what we find here is we've got two power supplies, we've got uh, one on the left, one on the right. Uh, both of those are redundant power supplies so that's why you've got a little LED on each of them which says uh, PS fail for power supply failure so if one power supply fails the system will still run, the indicator LED will light up so that the system administrator can replace the power supply. Now above that we've got a series of what looks like copper to fi uh, copper fibre over copper connectors. Um, they look like standard RJ45s but they're quite they're a little bit slimmer and inside, I don't know if you can see that, it looks like there's about a dozen pins. Now you've got uh, a little sticker here which indicates the BIOS revision. It's a Phoenix BIOS for a Pentium 2. Uh, on, uh, just over here we've got a fiber optic network card, a four port ethernet card, um, We've got a couple of fans here which are incredibly big. Uh, if I just pull one of these out, you'll see it runs pretty much the length of the server, excluding the hard disk drive caddies. It's quite a big fan, and if we flip it over, it's actually consisting of two fans, which uh, would um, it would remove the hot air from the uh, motherboard and hard drive. So let's put that back in there. Uh, there's another one just there. Now under here uh, there's a little counting mechanism. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that's for. It's probably for um, it's probably for location so you could set the um, you could set the location of each of each server because these are meant to be used in what's called a hypercube configuration. Um, which is quite a lot different to a normal network. Under here, under this little cover, there's uh, just a couple of USB ports. Uh, right here is an RS-232 serial port. Um, you'll notice the uh, lack of a video card or any form of keyboard or mouse inputs. The simple reason for that is because these are not meant to be used as computers in the traditional sense. They're meant to be used in a cluster or a hypercube as as, uh, as the company called it where many of these would be linked together and they would all be managed by, a, by one, uh, one terminal or one PC. Now uh, the power supplies are incredibly big and heavy. Let me just pop one out. Let's just pull one out. stuff 
to get out. Okay, I can't get that out, but these are 800 watts a piece, and they're incredibly big, incredibly heavy, and um, quite heavy duty, I'd imagine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the top of this so you can actually see. Well, I'm actually going to pull the board out because it comes out on a sled, but first I have to remove these fan units so you can see what's on the motherboard. There we go. Okay, now this is the motherboard. As you can see, it's uh, it looks to me like it's been custom designed. Tell you what, I'll pop this on the table so you can see it better. Right, so as you can see, it's still got um, the standard ATX power connector. It's got some uh, IDE uh, ports. It's got a floppy connector. Um, it's also got a few SCSI ports, which uh, the actual ports are not used. The actual 68-pin um, sockets on the board are not used. However, on the back side, uh, we have a series of connectors which connect into the back plane where the hard drives are connected and also where the power supply is connecting. So instead of having lots and lots of cables plugged into here and power going into here and disk drives over here and whatnot, you've just got everything run through the back plane which is uh, a lot more economical especially if uh, you're in a data center and you just want things to work and when they don't work you just want to change things out quickly uh, not messing about with cables so if we start with uh, this end here as I said before we've got a couple of IDEs a floppy and a parallel port socket we've got a BIOS battery which looks like it could be leaking so I wouldn't be a bit surprised if that doesn't hold any time uh, right, we've got the ATX power connector. We've also got a little uh, little connector there for what looks like what's it? Sys control byte blaster. I can imagine that's some sort of proprietary um, connector for N cube systems. We've also got two standard 32-bit PCI slots. We've got three. Um, 64-bit PCI X slots, not to be confused with PCI AE or PCI Express, which came much later. Now, two of those are populated. Uh, one of them is populated with a uh, four-port network card. Now, that's not a gigabit card. That's only a standard 10100 card. Now, just down over here, we have the fiber optic network card connector which I believe is one gigabit. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that would be a one gigabit connector on the end of that. Now over here, this is where it gets interesting. This looks like a fiber over copper um, interface board, but what's interesting about this is although it's got eight ports, it's also got four memory banks. And in each one of these is, let's have a look how much memory is in here. That looks like it's going to be 128 meg. Yes, yeah, so there's 512 megs of PC100 memory on this board. Now, this is actually a separate board. This is not attached to the board itself. It's uh, just above it, so that would connect via uh, a few little pins underneath. Now on top of here we've got uh, 128 megs PC100 system memory and uh, over here we've got a Pentium, was that Pentium 2 or Pentium 3? No, it's a Pentium 2, oh, let's see if I can get a shot of that, Pentium 2 400, uh, half meg level 2 cache, 100 meg FSB. Uh, you've got a small VRM voltage regulation module down there. Um, again, a series of SCSI ports. Now, this little chip here, 
this little gold covered chip here this is the processor for the uh, gigabit fiber optic network card if I'm just going to turn the camcorder upside down so you can actually see what it says uh, it's made by IDT it's a uh, 79RV5000 which is a 200 megahertz uh, processor these are quite common in um, things like network cards, SCSI controllers and so on now another interesting little thing down here is uh, I believe this to be uh, some sort of firmware chip it's uh, quite unusual because I've never seen this sort of set out before it looks it's about the same size as a sim card slot in a mobile phone but if we slide this up we find that it's actually on my screwdriver. Right then, well I've brought it back out here so I can power it up and uh, let you hear what it sounds like. Um, to be honest, I've tried, I've actually tried to put a VGA card in this. Um, where do I put it now? Uh, up here. I think it was one of those I've tried. Um, I've actually put a VGA card into it, connected it to a monitor and uh, there's no video output. Um, the only thing I can conclude from that is um, it probably runs a proprietary um, BIOS which doesn't allow a VGA output um, because these are meant to be networked devices, they're not meant to be run as PCs which is a bit of a shame really. Um, if I really wanted to I probably could find um, uh, a way of reflashing the BIOS probably over RS232 or uh, something like that but to be honest it's probably not worth it but I'll power it up anyway I'll let you hear what it sounds like now that is just the power supplies running that's uh, the actual system, as you see, is off. There's no LEDs. This is the switch which powers it on. I must say that's that's quite loud for a system. Let's just measure that on the. Uh, I've got a decibel meter on my smartphone. As you can see, it's giving out about. 80 decibels, 70 to 80 decibels. If I turn the microphone towards the fans, it's actually giving out 90 decibels, which is quite a lot, really. Now, if I turn that off by unplugging it, you find the ambient noise in here because of my other servers is only around 50 or 60 decibels which uh, is, isn't is too loud um, it's, you wouldn't be able to have it in your front room but uh, it's not too bad out here so having a system like this putting out 90 decibels is, uh, is quite something well, it's just, I must admit, it is a bit of a shame I can't show you this actually working on um, on a monitor because I'm sure it'd be quite a powerful unit. Um, what would be dual, uh, well, dual capable P2s, um, and you've got a lot of disk space there. Well, especially for its age. I mean, you're looking at about 300 gigs of disk space from 1999, when most desktop PCs were lucky to have a 20 gig hard drive in them. Um, tell you what, I'll power it up again. I'll just let you see what the front panel does when uh, when it's powered up. Not sure if you can read that. It might be a bit of glare, but it's uh, it's actually reading post 60. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Might be just to be able to 
just about able to see that perhaps now so it's booting and you'll notice all of the LEDs for the hard drive start to come on and it's now showing uh, a series of numbers uh, 00 slash 00 slash 99 what I might try and do is uh, when I get a bit of spare time I might try and connect this over RS232 and see if I can log into it through a terminal uh, emulator see what happens but um, in the meantime that's uh, that's all I can do with this so thanks for watching and I'll have another video up soon